This is the Clave B Autoclave by Flight Dental Systems. What you get with the unit is your main unit, a 220 volt power cord, a rack with four trays, two silicone drainage tubes, a spare door gasket, a tool for your trays, a special door tool, clave priming kit, a USB key, set of O-rings for your drain ports, an instruction sheet, and an instruction manual. The front of the unit, after you open the door, you've got your on-off switch, your two drain ports, one for the used water, one for the distilled water, a USB port, a built-in printer, and that includes a roll of paper. On the top you've got your display and control panel, up and down keys to get into the program and make changes, a select key to select the program, and your start key. Inside of the unit, you've got a large chamber that holds the rack. This slides in nicely. Door gasket should last about 500 cycles or one year. Should be re replaced annually. As an option, if you wanted to use cassettes, you could remove the racks. and rotate the rack 90 degrees and use cassettes. They come in different sizes from 5 to 20 instruments. You can have up to 3 rows of cassettes. This is the back of the Clave B. Safety relief valve, circuit breaker, the connector for the power cord, bacterial filter, and an air vent. The air vent will discharge a little bit of cool mist, not a lot of steam. Most of the heat will be coming from here, and it'll just be hot air. That's a reason for keeping distance away from the wall of about four inches. The bacterial filter has to be changed about every three months, depending on use. When it's new, it's white, as it gets older, it'll turn a darker gray color. First time that the unit is used, the plumbing is going to be dry. So there's a chance of an airlock in the plumbing. To avoid that and get around it, you're going to remove the filter inside the distilled water tank. You're going to take your curved syringe and using only distilled water, drop some water and inject it into this metal port and that'll lubricate the plumbing. When that's done, take the hose, dip it in the distilled water again, and pass it into that port. The water you injected earlier will help it slide inside the other tube. When it comes to a stop, you'll have about this much tube left. Fill the syringe again with water, connect it to the tube, and slowly push the water out of the syringe while raising the tube. That'll get rid of any air bubbles left in the tubing. This will have to be done just the first time you use the machine and 
possibly repeat it if the machine is run dry. So then you'll create another air bubble inside. And then fill the distilled water tank with maybe a couple of inches of water. Take the filter you took out earlier, put it under the water, shake out any air bubbles, and reattach it to the fitting. Then you can refill the rest of the distilled water tank to about a half inch below. After you've installed the unit on your counter or table and plug the power into it, you can turn the unit on and check it for a time and date. It does a quick self test. It comes up with the last program that was in use. Press the select key. We'll scroll down to basic set. Select that. And now you're able to change the date, time, language. You're not allowed and you cannot change the counter in this screen. So to change the time and date, you use the up and down keys. Let's say it's the tenth. Scroll over to the next number. Last digit is the year. It's a 24 hour clock. So if you're programming it in the morning, it'll be below 12 o'clock. In the afternoon, it'll be above 12 o'clock and it'll count to 24. During the initial install, the maintenance screen should be adjusted for the particular customer. It should be set for about 500 cycles or more, depending on how many cycles the customer is expected to use in a year, and the date should be set for one year in the future. To get into the maintenance screen, press and hold the up and down keys and power the unit on. It'll show a whole bunch of options. Simply scroll down to maintenance. After you get into maintenance, select it. It'll show the start date. Set that to the date that the unit was installed. The end date should be set to one year in the future. In this particular case, it isn't. So we'll adjust that. So now when the machine counts down from 500 to zero, it'll show up with a wrench display saying that the machine needs maintenance, or if it reaches one year in the future before that, it'll also come up with a symbol saying that it requires maintenance. And then you can power it off. Now we're going to select a program on the machine. First turn it on, let it initialize, does a self-test, comes up with the program that was last used. We're going to go to the main menu and you can see we've got unwrapped 121, unwrapped 134, wrapped 121, wrapped 134. And if we scroll down, you've got all the other choices Textile, both temperatures, pre-on 134 degrees only, plastics 121 degrees C only, drying time, a B and D test, a helix test, and a vacuum test. The vacuum test can only be done first thing when you turn it on when the chamber is cold, otherwise it will come up with an error code. Most common one that's used 
is going to be wrapped 134. So it's highlighted, that's the one that's going to be selected, selected, and you're ready to go once you load the chamber with your goods to be sterilized. Then press the start button.